All right, you can turn in your Bible to Romans chapter 3. This little exhortation here, brethren. Um, do you ever have a bad case of the what-ifs? What are you talking about? Um, you know, I was watching the news today, and uh, this is an act, so don't get excited. I was watching the news today, and um, boy, it looks like the Antichrist is going to show up any minute. What if, what if he shows up and we're still here? I mean, you know, it's going to happen soon. I, what if, what if the rapture? What if maybe it's not there? What if, what if I'm believing a lie? And, and what if, what if there really is no God? And what if? Do you ever have one of those times? Okay, I know the enemies of the Lord are going to be saying, "Oh, that's you trying to come to your senses." Whatever, go go fly a kite. Okay, this isn't video a video for you. This is a video for saved people. All right, uh, you'll have those times of doubt. You'll have those times where your flesh will start to put some doubts in your mind, and you know, and, and it'll come in many different ways too. It isn't just doubting your salvation or doubting the Bible or doubting whatever. Uh, sometimes you'll start to get your mind will start to go a little bit. You know, you have a friend online or somebody else and they don't write to you in a while and you go, what if I offended them? What if it was that one thing I wrote? I wonder if that's what did it. I wonder if they don't like me anymore. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and you'll go into this like huge big thing and like get yourself all worked up and all worried and everything else. And that's really what it's all about. It's about worry. Just going to give you a couple of verses. We're going to turn to two passages here. Just doing some little quick sermons. Just some things I need to get out. Romans chapter 3 verses 3 and 4. The word of God is a great comfort. It says here, For what if some did not believe? What if? You got it there? Bad case of the what ifs. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written. Hey, we have a deal. Could you put that in writing? Do you realize the God of the universe, the God of heaven and earth, um, he put uh, an agreement with us in writing as it is written? Pretty neat. That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Get a hold of that one. <laughs> you know. That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. How are you justified in your sayings as a Christian? When you quote scripture. I know the rapture is going to happen. Why? Well because. Like turning your Bible to such and such verse. Let's turn over here. Let's turn over there. Let's go over there. How do you know for sure that you're a Christian? How do you know who can say who's saved and who's lost? Well, let me show you from Scripture. Let God be true, but every man a liar. That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. Understand? And mightest overcome when thou art judged. Oh, you're narrow-minded. You're bigoted. You're a hate criminal. You're a this, you're a th All I am is a Bible believer. You know, I'd like to ask some of these perverts out there and stuff like this and the Sexual perversion is just running rampant right now. And they're saying that such and such is a hate crime. And you get Islam and you speak against Islam. It's Islamophobia. All this ridiculous nonsense. And I, you know, my defense, if I ever am confronted by one of these, I hate to call them liberal because liberal is actually a positive word in scripture. I prefer to call them reprobate. Um, it's more accurate describing them. Read Romans chapter 1. But, uh, you know, if I ever get confronted by one of these reprobates that tries to like threaten me or oh, you're a hate criminal you should be put in prison and stuff like this I'd like to ask one of these people sometime are you saying that it is illegal for me to live according to the teachings of the Holy Bible because that that's what it comes down to and see see they still try to maintain this little air of of uh, tolerance and diversity and stuff like this that's quickly eroding, and the people they're 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 basically socialists, communists. Uh, they're trying to censor speech and things like this. That's that's the whole thing, 
and as time goes by, they're going to remove this little veil of, of uh, well, I respect your beliefs and things and, and blah, blah. No, they don't. They're trying to overthrow our beliefs as Christians. And that's why you get to a point where you say, no, I'm not going to back down. Uh, but they just passed hate crime laws. I don't care. I don't care about those laws. Why? Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. I found it interesting. I did a sermon on this years ago. Let God be true. What's the first letter of each of those words? LGBT. I thought that was pretty funny. You know, somebody pointed that out. I thought that was great. You know, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender movement. But it's like, no, actually, it's let God be true. We have a book. That's a standard. You don't have to worry about what if. You know, again, it's such a wonderful comfort to be a King James Bible believer. I mean, here I am, I'm holding a book that goes back over 400 years. Show me a book in print that's been around for this long and it's still popular and still relevant. Show me one. You know, and the thousands and thousands of manuscripts that support this book. Not like the less than 1% of all Greek extant Greek manuscripts that support the new versions. You know. They won't get into that. Um, turn next to Philippians. little interesting word study you can do sometime, if you get the time to do it, is look at all the references to the word worry in your King James Bible, or worrying, or whatever, any derivative of the word worry. Look up how many times it occurs. Zero. We're not supposed to worry as Christians. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Here it actually kind of talks about worry. Be careful, full of care. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, it's very interesting. Um, you know, I've talked about this. I showed it, actually the video of the thing, the sump pump issue here that we have where we have a spring, a well in our basement, and it's always overflowing and stuff. And there's always the danger of what if the power goes out and, you know, the thing doesn't work and it floods the basement and blah, blah. And, you know, there's been many times where, um, you know, I've had something really important to do. I had something extremely important to do this morning very important uh, appointment and that I had to be at and it was like overnight you know it's the snow's melting rapidly here it's you know pretty nice you know, it's a good thing but it's making the the water coming into the basement is just incredible now and you know I'm laying there and I'm just like thinking what if what if the power goes out what if I can't get out and get the generator started in time what if I'm down in the basement and I'm trying to get the generator started and the power comes back on and it's flooding and I'm standing in water and the electricity. You know what I was doing? Worrying. And, uh, you know, there's times you, you start to say, you know, what if about anything? It's worry. What's the solution? In everything... By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Thank God for what He gives you. You'll all of a sudden start to have a different view on this world when you start to be thankful for the things that God's given you. Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Like the old hymn says. Yeah. You know, we have been blessed. God blesses you a lot. And we don't think about it all the time. We need to be thankful for everything that He does for us. And when you start to worry, and the what-ifs, the bad case of what-ifs start to get in your mind, that's a time when you stay, say, you know what, Lord, I, I'm, I'm kind of worried about this. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not trusting in you. I know you'll get me through this. I know Romans 8.28, For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. I know that's a promise. It's, a, it's not a you know, possibility. It's a promise in the Scriptures. Let God be true, but every man a liar, you know, as it is written. 
but you see that's what's going to give you peace and um you know um you know i get a lot of people sending me stuff and things and, and uh i've had some friends of the ministry and and uh I'm getting this thing more and more now. People are sending me stuff about, you know, impending war and, and a lot of negative things and stuff like this. And, and yeah, yeah, we're we're on the brink of World War Three, and it isn't going to be no fun little, you know, whatever. World War One and World War Two weren't fun either. But, uh, you know, I'm saying that the technological advancements in weaponry, military weaponry, is frightening now. What if? We go to war. Thank God for what he gave you and pray. Don't get a bad case of the what ifs. All right. So I just wanted to do a little quick sermon on this thing just to give you a little bit of a, a little exhortation there. And um, got some big stuff going on right now. So uh, that's why I'm just doing these little short mini sermons as I'm putting together other stuff. But uh, we appreciate your prayers. And um, I guess that's going to be it. We'll see you in the next video.